Hey there, good morning. Welcome back to my live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is September 20th, 2018, and we're going to write a little bit of code today. Um, it's, it's been a quick week. Um, it's already Thursday. I spent yesterday out of, uh, out of the house. Not, I mean, that's kind of weird for me um, because I'm, I usually work from home. I do the whole work from home thing. Um, and look at that. My lighting looks a little weird over there. Whoa! That's a little bit better. It'll clear up when I change sides. Um, I was in Indianapolis yesterday speaking at the Tyler Mesh event. Uh, I gave an hour-long talk, a 70-minute talk on .NET Core, .NET Standard, some of the future things that we've seen that are coming in .NET. It was a lot of fun. It was great to visit with some of those folks at Tyler. Um, I had a good time, but it was very quick. I, I mean, I literally flew out uh, Tuesday at about 3 o'clock, landed, at, and uh, no, no, I, I flew out at 6, landed at 8, went to bed, woke up, gave my talk, flew out. I mean, literally, I wasn't in Indianapolis for 18 hours. <laughs> mm. um, hey, whatever. That's, that's what I get paid to do. Um, that's the job. So let me, let me start some music here in the background. Of course, we listen to music to code by here on, uh, on this channel. And, um, today I want to play, I want to play this song. This is called Chartreuse. There we go. That's not bad. All right. This is music from Music to Code By, of course. This is uh, music that our friend Carl Franklin has graciously allowed us to play here in the background so that we can get in the flow, we can get focused, and we can write some code a little bit better together here on the channel. Thank you so much, Carl. We appreciate that. If you want to get some your hands on some of this music so you can listen to it on your own and without hearing this voice rambling over over it, check it out at musictoflowby.com. There's about six songs out there that you can download right now, and you can sign up for a subscription, and you'll get a new song every couple months, as well as access to the entire library. Check it out, musictoflowby.com. Hey, good morning there, chat room. I see a bunch of friends here that I recognize. I see Shy Sharp. I see IT Gorin. Good morning, good morning. Ancient Coder. Hey, Jurgen. Good to see you. Um, Nemanja is here and asks, uh, what time do I get up? You tweeted today and got a response in like 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Figured it's about 6 a.m. in Philly. Um, today I got up about 5.30 a.m. East Coast time. Um... I usually try to get up in the five o'clock range because I can get so much done before the folks on the West Coast wake up and uh, <laughs> start bugging me. Um, so that's that's just me. When I used to work with folks in Eastern Europe regularly, I would get up at five a.m. respond to their emails before five six before six a.m. my time. And when they went to lunch, right, I would take care of all that stuff. They're off at lunch. I would take care of getting, helping getting the kids out to, out to school. Um, we'd get the kids to school, and our friends out in Eastern Europe would be done. They'd log uh, some responses to my emails, and we would work together throughout the rest of my morning up until about lunchtime when they would take off for the end of the day. Worked out really nicely. So, hey, Joker, good to see you. Good morning, Brave Cobra. Actually, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Bruno's here. Hello, hello. Um, Boop5 has a question. What's the difference between .NET Core and .NET Standard? Good question. Let's, I, th I think we'll take a, a couple minutes and answer that, and then we'll get into our project today. Hey, Maker Blaker and Jwood803, Mud Diver. Hello, hello. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in and joining us today. I already drank, I already drank so much coffee this morning. I've switched over to, uh, to G Fuel. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Uh, do, do, do. I watched this a few times, and there's a YouTube link, and that is uh, episode, oh, the, uh, session 107, Building Great Libraries Using .NET Standard. That was from, that link is uh, uh, Imo Landworth session from .NET Conf 2018. Really good, um, but we'll talk through that. We'll talk through that real quick. 
Uh, Joker asks, I want to upgrade the mic I use to record videos, and based on what I've heard, a condenser mic is better at blocking background noise. <clears throat> what kind of mic do you own? I, I was using, and you can find it, let's see, let's, let's change scenes here. Let's go over to this. <clears throat> yeah, that light still looks kind of funky there. Can I, can I back this up? Can we improve that a little? That's better. Um, I have filler lights that go in there. Um, so the light, the, uh, the light, listen to me. The, that's not my website, jeffreyfritz.com. The mic that I normally use, that I was using, not this mic. Um, the mic I was using. Hey, there's Kathleen. I didn't publish our stream from Tuesday yet. Um, I want to edit that down and put a, a tail on the end of that because we lost network and it just died so quickly. I use the. I was using the Rode Podcaster and it's a great mic. It's a USB based mic. Very good for for getting you up and running. Um, it's. It's a, it's a decent price out there. Thank you for the follow, S. Bauer. I appreciate you joining us. So it's a, it's a couple bucks. It's not cheap to get this mic, but it is cheaper than buying a mic and a mixer. And this will really get you, it's got a um, uh, pop filter built into it. The only, my number one complaint about this microphone is right there, right there. See that headphone jack? They don't tell you this, but that headphone jack mixes down to mono. So while you're listening to it and you get to hear the level that you are speaking at, it mixes down to mono. So you can't use it to just listen to all the music and stereo that's playing going through your system. But if you are just recording videos, it is amazing, very high quality. I was using it for almost, what, 10 months here on stream? and really great stuff. If you listen to any of my videos that are recorded for Pluralsight or Wintelect, I use this microphone and it's really, really good. You don't have control over your, your EQ graph. You don't have control over, like, like I said, it, it, you lose the stereo here. It becomes a little bit trickier to control and that's why um, just here in the last few weeks, I've upgraded, <laughs> I've upgraded my system significantly. I now have a Mackie Pro FX mixer here next to me. You can't see it. It's down here. Um, I've got eight channels coming in and I'm now using, this is a, what is this? I forget what this is. Yeah, this is an Audio Technica that I'm using and you can very clearly see I've got a pop filter on the front of it. Um, but I purposely... Be, because I'm a guy and I've got a little bit of a radio voice, I've purposely dialed up the bass a little bit so that so I get the, the radio voice happening in a little. So uh, I need to document exactly what I've put in place here. I'm going to be installing some soundproofing panels here in my home office, um, particularly particularly on the door over there so that when the kids are home, it's a little bit quieter and a little bit more sound absorbing here in the office. So... It's coming. We're going to be doing that in October. And uh, just because I am swamped over the next few days here. So uh, you can, of course, go over here to live. Uh, it, you can get to livejeffreyfritz.com and it'll remap you to jeffreyfritz.com slash live. Everything about my stream, including the link off to live streaming 101. My green screen gave me a green face. Did it? We're good. I'm wearing my geek hat today because uh, I'm, I'm going to geek out on a couple things. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, let's see here. Hey, Zarnal. Good to see you. And sequel, Mr. Magoo. Thanks so much. I got a message uh, this morning um, from Jurgen. Yeah, I hope you don't mind if I if I uh, call this out. Um, hey, Marty. Ma Wardy 94 Hello. Um, I got a tweet from, from Jurgen this morning. Um, it's a public tweet, so I, I don't think there's a problem with me sharing this, um, that they want to take a look at his user group, at, at his meetup group, at some of the issues in CoreWiki and maybe work on them together and submit some pull requests. I think that's amazing. That is really cool. Absolutely. That's why I've been uh, building this application in the open is so that we can all learn from it. And if you want to take some time and learn from it and try something different, go for it. Break it. 
have fun, fork it, do what you need to with it. I'd be happy if you share what you've learned back with us. I think that would be really great. So let me know, you know, give it a try. I, I absolutely encourage that kind of thing. Lighting balance issue with the green screen. What do you mean? I don't think we're pretty good. I thought we were in really good shape with the green screen. I've got this little thing right here that I'm trying to clear up. Yeah, there we go. That's better, right? If I really wanted to go green screen and have some fun with it, I'd grab the light and just completely, right? Now we're really messing with things, okay? So, when I look to the left, when I, oh yeah, it's, it's a reflection off of, right? I'm looking over here. No, or is it that way? I think I'm all right. Um, I'm trying to look tanned. <laughs> Yeah, it's all this, all the monitors in front of me. Let me come back to that question that we had from uh, from the manja earlier about difference between .NET Core and .NET Standard. Um, so let's do this. Let's go over here. You know what? I think we can actually illustrate this quite nicely inside of CoreWiki. So let's go over here. There it is. There's our CoreWiki source code right there above me. Um, so CoreWiki not in Server Explorer, Solution Explorer. There we go, this one. CoreWiki is made up of a series of .NET Core projects, right? And .NET Core is a, a .NET framework. It's a framework that will help us um, right, build applications that run cross-platform. Your source code will run on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's all open source, all the code that's written and delivered from Microsoft. And um, what you'll find is that all of the... Uh, all of the features are being released very quickly as a series of packages. It's a different CS project model that uses what, what you'll hear some people refer to as the SDK model. And it's because it doesn't have any GUIDs in it and it refers directly to an SDK. Let me just show you what that file looks like real quick. See, so it says project SDK equals, right? So this is, right, saying this is the software development kit. I, I think this was Boop that was asked, was it Boop 5? Yeah, Boop, there we go. Um, so, Boop, I want to make sure that I answer your question here and, and really show you, make it a little bit clearer exactly what's going on here. So, this project model uses, right, it has these package references here, and these are packages that it's going to include and use when building this application. You can tell that this is a .NET Core app because it has target framework specified as .NET Core App 2.1. Hey, Zero by Zero, thank you so much for following. I appreciate the follow, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. And friends, I think Steve's getting a little sweaty. He's getting a little busy. Veronica Geek says, uh, hey there, thank you for your video behind the scenes. I just bought the stream deck and getting almost ready to do streaming. You do PowerShell stuff. Veronica, that is so cool. Let me know when you get started, and I will absolutely help cross promote you there. And share maybe some of the folks in in our audience here would be interested in seeing your stuff but let's let's see what we can do to 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 get you a little bit of promotion and get started so when you look at it at this sdk this cs project file you see the target framework here and it's net core app now notice it's app when you're building with net core you're usually building an application you can build what are called class libraries. Those are those DLLs that you see laying around, right? Well, if you build a, a if you're building an application that is going to be either an ASP.NET application, ASP.NET Core application, or a console application, you're building an application that's actually going to be compiled and run on a system. But if you're building a class library, it's not necessarily going to be run. It's going to be referenced by another project. Well. We've got now .NET Core, .NET Framework, and Xamarin. So we have three different .NETs out there. And if you want to write up a, a library that could be reused across those different .NETs, right? The .NET Framework that's been around for 15, 16 years that folks use and love to build things like WPF applications, Windows Forms applications. If you want to reuse your library that you've written in .NET Core with .NET Framework, or the other way around, from .NET Framework to .NET Core, you need to do some tricky things to make it work. And 
if you want to get it to work in your Xamarin application so you can use it inside of that iPad app or that Android application or even an iPhone application, how do you make it work? How do you get it to cross compile like that? And that's where .NET Standard comes in. .NET Standard lets you write an application, write a library, not an application, you write a library that can then be referenced by these other frameworks. And here, up there, the core wiki core project, and I think a bunch of these other projects do as well, we specify the target framework is .NET Standard 2.0. And what this means then is that the code that we're writing here isn't targeting a framework, a specific framework that's, that sits on disk. Instead, it targets an API contract definition, all right? And when you compile, you're compiling against that contract. Oh, Mud Diver, I wouldn't forget the web forms, folks. Absolutely. Love web forms. You can reference, the, uh, uh, let me come back to that. So your .NET standard library that you're compiling against, right? So this is core. This is compiled against that contract. Now, when I reference the DLL that this generates inside of, you know, the real application that we're going to compile and build and deliver, right? If that's a, if that's a, um, Windows Forms application or a WPF application, or maybe it's an ASP.NET 4.7 Web Forms application. See what I did there, Mud Diver? See what I did? You can reference and use this library because it targets that contract that those other frameworks understand. Now, here's the magic that happens. When the actual compile happens with your application that targets that other framework, whether it's .NET Framework or Xamarin or .NET Core, this .NET Standard library will have its references, that contract, satisfied by whatever platform it is that you're targeting in the application that references this library. So let's let's break that let's make that a little bit more concrete here. So this library is referencing .NET Standard 2.0. When I reference it from my core wiki project that reference it that that defines that it's targeting .NET Core 2.1 at compile time, the contract that core wiki .core project requests gets satisfied with .NET Core 2.1 concrete references, right? That contract is satisfied, and now what's in CoreWiki Core will work on .NET Core. Does that make sense there for you, Boop? Let me know. It, it's it's a little bit tricky because you're doing this, this swap out, right? This almost bait and switch. But what it does then is it makes it really easy and for you to build libraries and business logic then that becomes very, very portable that you'll be able to lift up and use you know, maybe if you've got some business logic that you built in .NET Framework that you want to reuse in a new .NET Core application, you can refactor into a .NET Standard project and it should just work. Similarly, you'll be able to lift that, that business logic and put it into an iPad app or an iPhone app or an Android application. Fantastic. So glad I could help you out with that, Boop. Let me know if you have any other questions. I'm more than happy to answer. Oh, uh, Chris Jones says, I feel like I had to share this. Uh, I was out last night with my team, ordered a diet cola. Am I branching out? What do we got here? Let's see. Am I branching out? <laughs> All right, let's share. Uh, here we go. Look at that. Fritz Cola. On a zucker. No sugar. Nice. No. I'm not going into that. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Uh, let's see. Net has been used in some games and their mods. Um, PowerShell for Office 365, SharePoint on-prem, PowerShell PMP. That's pretty cool. Good afternoon. Let's see, we have Tiago and Mawardi. And let's see... Uh, oh, hey, Oz Coder. Ancient Coders here. Bruno. All right. Let's let's move on. So here's what I'm running into. Here's what I think we should we should solve. All right, the problem that I want to get through here. Um, I want to get this running. I want to get this building with some great, um, 
unit test results coming out of Azure DevOps. And we started this last last time on Tuesday, and we had CoreWiki building using Cake directly, but we couldn't get any information out of it. And it felt a little weird. Um, Mawardi asks, do I prefer VS Code or VS 2017 in front end work? I can go either way, honestly. Um, I'm... I, I am thinking I'm going to spend some more time in VS Code going forward, but I really like all the features and tools that are in full Visual Studio 2017. That being said, um, oh, you're not too late, Turrican. I want to make sure um, we had some folks asking after I did May is for Macs, right? The whole month of May, we spent writing .NET code on a Mac. <clears throat> I think we're going to do, I, I'm, I'm committing to it. We're going to do this. We're going to do Ubuntober. All right. Ubuntober. I, I, we're going to make that a thing. Okay. All through the month of October, all the code that I do here on stream, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to fire up a virtual machine and we are going to run in Ubuntu. I might be using uh, Visual Studio Code over there, but we are going to spend the entire time, uh, yeah, everything that we do on screen will be Ubuntu Linux. I'm going to make sure that, that we show and we share that you can be extremely productive. You can do some really cool things with Ubuntu and Linux, uh, Ubuntu Linux and .NET. Um, and we'll go through some of the interesting configuration stuff. We'll go through um, some of the great ways that you can use, um, that you can work with the, the Ubuntu-based databases. It'll be a lot of fun. Using VS Code is cheating. Use the Ubuntu default code editor. Are you referring to VI, Sarno? Is that what you're referring to? Because we can. We can. Do it! And we will. So VS Code is not cheating. It's there. I can use it if I want to. But we can do some VI. In fact, maybe we'll install VI and put down... Um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name of the... Uh, the flame, the the plugin for VI. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I can't remember it. OmniSharp, thank you so much, Scott Addy. Yep. Would you be running Ubuntu on a VM? Yes. Yes. Um, just because I need to be able to broadcast it and capture the video like I'm doing here. So I think that would be the safest way for me to go. All right. Um, so let's take a look at this. So I've been working through the Azure pipelines, keen to see how it performs in a VM. I've seen some issues with the display in the past where it won't go full screen. It won't go full 1080p. I'm hoping it's fixed by now. Um, so we'll get into that in, over the next week or so. I've only got about a week until then. That reminds me, we are exactly one month away <clears throat> from the Rainbow Beard Challenge wrapping up, and we are about 1,300 short. And um, we picked up almost 100 since Tuesday, even though we ended so terribly on Tuesday. My apologies. Um, so here's what I want to do. I want to make sure we, we get this thing solved. I want to get this thing met. I want us to have um, some... I want us to have a lot of fun with this. Um, so what I'm thinking, and it's a little, <laughs> a little motivated by something that happened last week. I'm thinking of lowering the goal. There's a nice new Hyper-V quick start for Ubuntu this week. Really? Uh, Smab, if you can send me that link, I'd greatly appreciate it. If you use the latest 1804 with XRDP support, resolution should be fine. I don't know, Insomnia Geek. I didn't, I didn't. I haven't looked at it yet. <clears throat> Ubuntu VM installing now on Win 10 took two seconds to quick create Ubuntu install. Nice. Um, and it runs great in Hyper-V. Yeah, I've had this six, one, the 16 versions running great in Hyper-V. I haven't tried the 18 versions yet. So, 
Um, so I'm looking at, at reducing the count here. And it's a little bit motivated by, by an interaction I had last week where I ran into some folks um, that, that, quite honestly, thought that we can't produce um, compelling video content um, outside of the suburbs of Seattle. And that makes me sad because they are that clueless. I think we've been onto a great thing here and I want to continue pushing. I've got a bunch of features and things that I, and innovations that I have planned that we're going to do that are going to be a heck of a lot of fun. And, um, I want to prove them wrong. Don't ever get me angry. S Bauer 318. Thanks so much for that subscription. I'm going to match that. And we're going to make a donation to Girl Develop It, just like we did about a week ago. Thanks so much for your contribution. Um, but, but don't ever challenge me. Don't ever make me mad because you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Um, we're going we're gonna to do some amazing things here. So I think I'm going to lower that count just a little bit and uh, see if we can hit that. All right. Yeah, thank you, uh, S. Bauer. I really appreciate that. Enjoy the, the emote. Um, and S. Bauer used their Twitch Prime subscription. Um, if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you can link it to your Twitch account and uh, you'll get one free channel subscription that you can use anywhere here. If you choose to use it with me, not only do you get the .NET bot emote, but you'll also get, uh, you'll also get a, will make a donation to Girl Develop It. Thanks so much. So my point is, um, I like proving people wrong. Hey, Woodsy, thank you for that subscription. I appreciate that as well. Um, and we're going to absolutely create some more great video content here. I mean, we did almost, we did more than 50 hours of content over the last week. What do you see we have planned for Ignite next week? In fact, do I have it still up? I was looking at my Ignite schedule here. Um, I need to log in in order to show this. Uh, let me show you real quick what this looks like. Yeah, yeah. I'm one of these. So if you go out to the Ignite area here, uh, this is funny. Recommended for me. It knows nothing about me. It's like, thanks so much. Who do you think you are? Will Ignite be on the VS stream as well? Um, probably. That's... Whatever I can broadcast, I will put over there. So I'm giving these three sessions at Ignite. Um, migrate your existing ASP.NET application to ASP.NET Core. I will not be in the hot room for that, but it will be available about a week or so later. Um, and that's... A, oh, it's only 45 minutes. I thought it was a 75 minute. Whew. Don't have to give as much content. Um, and then I'm giving this workshop twice, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 75 minutes, and Friday at 10.45, so about our normal time. Um, and this is Get Started with ASP.NET Core. These will, these will be broadcast live on the Visual Studio channel, and I want you to tune in. Um, tell your friends, tell your families. Oh my gosh, Mud Diver, thank you for that subscription with your Twitch Prime. I appreciate that. Um, I won't be taking... I'll be focused primarily on the folks in the room, but I'm going to write up a little bit of, here's what you need to have installed to get started with this. And in fact, I think you might be able to, to see this. Does it have a... Here's what you need installed? No, it's just me. Um, what I'll do is I'll blog about here's what you need to have installed so that you can have that installed have, have that stream open maybe on another screen and be able to watch, enjoy and have a good time with us um, like I said it's twice 4pm Eastern and 10.45am Eastern Tuesday and Friday now so that means Tuesday I'm not it's going to be weird how I run my stream next week. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get my normal times in on Tuesday and Thursday, but 
Friday morning. I'm going to be a little bit earlier with my normal stream. I'm going to, it looks like we're going to get started at 8 with a special guest. It isn't who I, who I was trying to get, but we're going to spend some time um, talking about Cosmos DB on Friday morning. And once I have the final confirmation on that, I will lock it down and you'll see a notice about that. But I want you to tune in for these two sessions live from Ignite next week. I'll get them on the schedule, figure out how to put them on the front page of Twitch and all that stuff. Hey, good morning, Fierce Kittens. Hope you, I, if you're not already tuned into Fierce Kittens she do, and, you're, and you're interested in, in some more of the crafts and hobbies. See what I did there? Crafts and hobbies. Um, check out Fierce Kitten stream. She's do, she does some really cool stuff around sewing, painting, drawing, and then she drops in a live coding session or two. She builds that gift bot that you see a lot of other folks on Twitch use. Um, check it out tonight. She's on the front page of Twitch. And uh, build, and she's she's finishing a uh, right. She's making a dress that has the Star Wars porgs on it. That's kind of cool. They're cute. They're cuddly, and they're all over this dress. I think that's kind of cool. Last thing you want to do at night is code. Oh, we need to fix that. We need to make it more fun to code. Hey, Jason, howdy. All right. Uh, Freti is here. Hello, hello. So that's what's going on at Ignite next week. Um, and I will have more details as they come. Um, let's see here. So we started working with DevOps last time. And I created, and I think this is a public organization. I created an organization called Fritz and Friends. Um, you might be able, everybody might be able to get here. Right? So this is an organization. DevAzure.com slash Fritz and Friends. Um... Is there like a configuration thing here somewhere? Because I don't see anything like that. Organization settings. It's there behind my head. Hmm. Um, policy security. What's under security? Because I want this to be public. Let everybody be able to take a look. Um, oh, dear Lord. I, I don't even want to think about that. Roman, Roman Bleichik. Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you tuning in. Um... This is a little crazy. Agile online. Can any can anybody see this? Does anyone use Azure for hosting open source projects? In which plan to use? It's it, so they're they're making it more accessible to open source projects, just like CoreWiki, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to prove out here is showing how easy it is to use with open source. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Roman. Yeah, so that's helping us get towards this rainbow beard goal here. If we get to, it's now it, it's currently five thousand. I'm going to reevaluate it later today. I may push it down to forty five hundred because we're getting about a hundred a week. Then not even a hundred a week, a little bit more than a hundred a week new followers, and it might get there. URL says four hundred one not authorized. Well, that will not do because this says public. What happens? What happens if you go here? <coughs> right, if I if I do that and let's say new private window. So you don't know who I am. Yeah, you can get there. Fantastic. All right. Pipelines. 33% build succeeded. Well, that feels bad. So pipelines are our continuous integration, continuous deployment feature. And it's this little rocket ship over here. Ubuntu finished and running. That was really easy and quick. Fantastic. That's cool to hear, Mr. Magoo. Uh, omitted that. Okay, so you can't go to the organization, but you can go to the project. That's weird. All right. I feel like I'm missing a configuration something, but the configuration for that is just a mess to try and figure out. Um, so we have these two build configurations that we're looking at. And the first one here... If I remember this one correctly, this is one that we're targeting. Yeah, we're using with Cake. Cake is the C Sharp Make project. And our friend uh, DevLead, right, that's Matthias, one of the leads who helps build the Cake project, is um, has contributed this build script. And it works great. And, it, and we have it set up over on AppVare. And it, it does our continuous integration for the CoreWiki project right now. And it tells us whenever there is a successful build. 
Um, there should be one around here. There you go, the little check mark there. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to do the same thing, but with the new Azure DevOps Pipelines feature. Let's see, Jurgen says, I got the right Fritz Cola. Oh no, what do we have? There you go. All right, all right. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, Veronica, oh my gosh, thank you so much for using your Twitch Prime subscription here. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, thanks so much. Of course, I'll match that and we'll make a donation to Girl Develop It. That's great stuff. Thank you, Veronica. All right, now I'm, I want to translate what it says on Coffin Haltega Limonada Zucker Fry. So it's sugar free uh, coffee lemonade. Coffin Haltega. I'm, I'm blanking on the translation on that part, but it's lemonade sugar free. That's, that's great. <laughs> thank you. Uh, who was that? Jurgen, thank you. Caffeinated lemonade. Ah, that's what it is. Caffeinated. All right. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we started working on taking a look at this. Hey, Code Therapist. Uh, uh, good afternoon in Switzerland. Um, so we started using uh, CoreWiki with with the cake script to, to get a build, and it was doing the build nicely. And I tried to dial in the... Um, here, let me get back to this. I tried to run it, uh, dial in the publish unit test results task here, and I'm getting an error coming out of coming out of this that says while scanning for the next token. I mean, it's literally a YAML formatting error. Um, code therapist from Egypt. Oh no no oh, uh, Mawardi is in Egypt. Oh, that's very cool, Mawardi. I didn't know you were in Egypt. Cool. Uh, welcome, of course. Um. So I need to figure out why this isn't referenced and loading properly because what I'd really like to do, I'd, I want to get the, that those unit test graphs coming out of this that show that it's testing properly, not just building properly, right? Um, I mean, great, the build completes and the build completes because the tests succeeded, but I also want to know what tests succeeded and if it fails, what tests failed? The, you know, that's kind of an important benchmark here for me to have as, as continuous integration runs so I know why it failed, right? Not just some error script, error message that says, oh, it failed, like this, right? Give me an, if it, if a test failed because we broke something, tell me what it was. Um, looking at, yeah, that's, I think that's mine, isn't it? The indentation is wrong. Yeah, okay. I completely agree, Brave Cobra. And I was looking at this. And when I go back over here, that looks that looks right. Now let me let me try opening that. So I, I put my pipelines, Azure Pipelines cake. I'm gonna open this with uh not one of those. Um no. Open in File Explorer, there we go. Da, 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 da. Pipelines, Azure Pipelines Cake. Let's take a look at this. I want to open this with, I want to open this with Notepad. Give me Notepad. There we go. So now look at, now, are you kidding me? Why does that look? So much different than that right I mean brave Cobra you're totally right but I'm looking at this and I'm I'm concerned about Visual Studio Oscoder asks does YAML have a problem with spaces yes so YAML is very um, YAML is right is it space is uh, very significant with YAML um, right? So, yeah, that's, that's a tab. So I, 
I have to use spaces, man. That's what's going on here. I don't like spaces. I really don't like spaces. Exactly, it's the exact same problem again. And that makes me angry. Because it's literally somebody has made a decision, an opinionated decision, about how this should be formatted, and they've imposed their opinion on everybody. Are you sure about the bash entry? I think it should be under a task. What do you say? Uh, the bash entry. Yes, Brave Cobra, I, I agree. This is why I couldn't process it because it's invalid YAML because it's not formatted properly. Now, your question about the bash entry. Dear Lord. I feel like a monkey typing space like this. Dear, like I'm running around at a zoo just slapping a keyboard until it formats properly. The bash entry, let me see. So this right here, yes, that was working properly before we added in this task. That's okay. So I'm gonna save that again and let's try and push that. I thought I had, I guess I don't. Let me start PowerShell, yeah, I know, right? And it looks the same to you, Visual Studio, you turkey. See Dev Core Wiki. I had to take some medicine this morning. I've got something weird in my mouth. My apologies. Um, what are my changes that I have here? Let's see. Uh, my solution file, that's fine. Let's commit these changes. Attempt to get uh, test results published. That's not how you spell results. And that's not how you spell commit either. Right. Published, there we go. Did you just call Visual Studio, you turkey? Yes, I did. Yes, yes, I did. Absolutely. I am an equal opportunity offender when my tools behave in ways that I don't expect, I call them on it. Uh, let's see here. I don't think it's an opinion. It's the definition of how that file format works. Oh, I see what you're doing there, Smab. Yeah, that definition is very opinionated. I choose... There we go, let's go back here. I choose to be spaces and not tabs. Just like F-sharp, I choose to be spaces and not tabs. Which makes folks who prefer... Look at that, all right, so we already got into building, right? We're actually building at this point. Visual Studio is a bit of ham. VS Code, definitely a turkey. <laughs> uh -huh. I see what you did there, Jason. If we create a little pipeline in DevOps, we can see how the YAML looks and what the format should be. Right. Do you have need a YAML exception in your editor config? That's a, oh, Mr. Magoo. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. While this is running, Let's go do that because that's a really, really good idea. Let's go into here, right? So let's write uh, star.yml and we're gonna make indent, no, indent style equals space. Yeah. Now what's this one down here? Why is that upset? Uh, okay, there, we'll do that. All right. Uh, what's a YAML exception? Oh, uh, uh, there you go. <laughs> I answered it for you already. See that? We're working together already, Tiago. See that? We got a thing happening. 
All right. Um, so there it is running. Got some warnings. That's fine. Do it. Come on. Do it. Do it. Publish test results. It did something. Two warnings. No, wait. Get back here. At least one assembly start time was not obtained due to tag not present or parsing issue. Total run duration will not be summation of time. All right. Make sure the re uh, the format of the file matches X unit test result format. Invalid results file. You make me sad. So in other words, it didn't find it. That's what I'm reading there. So let's take a look at what happened during the test. Da, da, da. Test. Test run for blah, 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 blah. Results file is, ooh, look at that. It's all lowercase test results. I bet you we told it to read from something that was, no, no. Star, star, slut, whack, test results dot XML. So that should have been there. Go down to the thing. Where'd it go? Test. So it should have found that file. And it actually, it, it kind of did, didn't it? Right? If we look here. Uh, well, it's not telling me. Oh, no, oh, here we go. The result of the format file, test results, test results.xml matches X unit. Well, it, it should have, right? Does it need to be two spaces? Oh yeah, we should specify that too. Nope, doesn't have test results. So even though this is running and it looks like it has it, it doesn't have it. Um, and I'm also gonna fix this name here as well while I'm here. We're gonna replace bootstrapper with, of course, come on. You, really? You're not gonna paste that in there? Bootstrap. Yep, yep, fix them all. All right. Let's look at this again. Uh, so that is quoted, so it should find it. But it's telling me the... Uh, please fix the display name as well. Build on Mac OS. Um, actually, so I think that's what the build, the VM image has to be. Uh, this one. Make it like that. Um, that's better. Let's see. Build on Linux, and this looks like it has, yeah. So let's take a look. It's, it's saying slash home VSTS work 1S test results XML. Let me paste that into a notepad here so we can remember where it wrote this file to. Um, okay. So it wrote it out to home VSTS work 1S test results, test results XML. So it, it sure looks like it wrote it out properly. I would love to be able to see the results of that file. Um, You know what I mean? Um, download the log. What do we have here? What's this look like? Yeah, I agree, Brave Cobra. Let's take a look. Does the file need to be named testresults.trx? Have a look in Cake. What type of export we're doing? TRX with XML extension? I don't. I don't think so. We'll take a look. Um, well, that was incredibly useful. Stupid. Not what I was looking for. Let's see, what do we got here? Have a look in the cake file. All right, so we'll go over to build.cake. Yeah, that's uh, that's not right. Um, so I was previously, previously on Fritz and Friends. Um, we were looking at argument customization. Right, it was going to results file test results trx. You might need to specify vs test 
for the test runner instead of X unit. Hmm. Had an itch since the pull request. <laughs> oh, I know exactly what you're saying. Yes, I I get it exactly. Um, I I feel the same way. Um. Hmm. Even if I do make it test results TRX, right? Um. Right. I mean, it's a. I mean, who cares about the file name, right? Might need to specify VS test for test runner instead of X unit. Well, it is an X unit. It is an X unit test. So, yeah. I'm not quite sure here. Um, <laughs> Let me see. Where do we go here? The default option uses J unit format when, a when using vs test as test runner and this is right this is the test published test results test public published test results task um the test results files option should be changed to slash test star dot trx so inside of build cake we're telling it to use the trx logger so are we confusing it hmm Test result format, specify the format. The following formats are supported, JUnit and Unit and Unit 3. Visual Studio Test, TRX and Unit 2. So maybe this, sh even if this was, even if this was test results.trx, right? It, TRX means that this ne needs then to be at VS2017. VS test. Let's try that. Let's make this TRX. Um, which then means we need to come over here. Yep, that's good. All right. Let's give this the old try then. Uh, I have three files that have changed. What are the files? Editor config built. All right. So let's push this up. Um, I would still prefer the XML output of X unit then. I agree. However, right, even though <clears throat> test result format I can specify is X, right, I could, oh, wait a sec. All right, hang on, back up a second. I kind of agree that I would prefer this to be X unit, right? And that's the format that it says is an option here. So if I use that, there we go, then I would want this to be test results XML. Which means over here, I want this to be test results XML. But my logger, I don't, it, do I just do that? Um, X unit um, logger argument. Hey, code for, uh, for Veronica, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, and Right, let's see here. X unit does not capture console capturing output. Right? Is this where I can specify my logger? Logger. No. Right? Mm, no. Why can't I click documentation there? Um. Getting test results in, <clears throat> oh, here we go, in VSDS. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, no, 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 no. Logger X unit. Oh, where'd you find that, Brave Cobra? That looks good. That looks real good. Let's use that suggestion from Brave Cobra. So if I paste that in there. I'm going to make this, uh, oh, that's fine. I'll change it so it's that file name. Now let's give that a shot. Attempting to capture 
unit test results. There we go. Nah, do it. We're going to do it live. Something like that. This medication they've got me taking is uh, its pretty funky stuff. Never run it locally. If I do run it locally... Might not output if this is a plug-in for X-Unit. Maybe drinking the Fritz Cola would help. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Wait. I World exclusive. No, no. Other people have Fritz Cola. Um, that's what we wanted. All right. Here we go. Let's see what happens here. Doing the build. Doing the stuff. Oh, wait a sec. That's green. That's a good start already. Mm, come on. Come on. No. Could not find test logger with assembly qualified name. Friendly name X unit. Okay. Let's go back to. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's X unit logger for VS test platform. Yeah, this looks like something we need to install. Um, I had a reference to the XUnit logger NuGet package in the test project. Yeah. Um, so we're going to need to add that. XUnit XML test logger. I'm just going to copy that. Uh, no, 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 no. There we go. Do it. Ooh, that might actually work. No. <laughs> um, I'm doing it at the command line. I'm going to cheat. Copy and paste. All right. So now if I do the build. There it is. Yeah, so it's going to crash on the next the next time through, and I've got two of them building right now. Uh, stop. Wow. Wow. So, I have... I gotta show you, while this is building, something that I think is pretty cool. Uh, let me bring this over here. Um... I have something coming in the mail that I'm really looking forward to. Um, one second. Here it is. Load already. <coughs> Come on. You can take this higher. There's Fritz Cola with coffee on the market. Ooh. I need to get my hands on some of that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay. We'll come back to that. if I can show this. I should be able to show this. Here it comes. I don't like how some websites block password websites from running. Password tools from running. No. Of course it's not going to work. Uh... 
Mm, I have a hat and business cards coming. Yeah, I paid a couple bucks for it. But check out, so the hat, look at this. On the front, yep. And on the back, ha <laughs> Twitch TV, C Sharp Fritz. So that should be here in time for Ignite. But my business cards, I actually got square business cards made. With works on my machine, ship it. And on the back, QR code. Nice. So, coming soon, and I'll be handing those out all over the place, wherever I'm at. Um, all right. So this looks like it built properly, and the results file is over here. So let's try opening that. Uh, no. Give me Notepad. Well, that looks better. All right. Um, still waiting for IT support to fix my desk Ethernet. It's not like I need it for hardware tester. Are you kidding, Veronica? Are you kidding? Oh, that's terrible. Tell them I, tell them I said they have to get it fixed. <laughs> Um, hmm. I'm looking at where it wrote that test result file. Eh, whatever. Right, I need to make sure then that this... Yeah, it should find it. I should install Notepad 2. No, I refuse. I've got VS Code. Don't need it. Hey, Sarah's here. Good morning, Sarah. Welcome. It's great to see you. Let's welcome Sarah. There she is. All right. All right. That's enough. That's enough. You, you can stop the applause now. Okay. All right. There we go. So, um, anyways. All right. Let's, uh, yeah, let's commit this. All right. So, git add core wiki test project. So, we needed that. Git commit am. Um, yeah. Uh, added missing, added missing logger reference. And this should now do the X unit logging and hopefully we'll get it, we'll get it running properly over there in DevOps. There we go. I'm going to, while the build is kicking off, I'm going to modify my git ignore to ignore test result XML files. Um, so notepad.git ignore. And I'm going to come down here and say, um, ignore, that's not how you spell ignore. Ignore test results. So that was a uh, uh, test result XML, right? Test result XML, yeah. So this is the git ignore file. This is all the files and, and formats that you want the source control to ignore. Don't try and commit these. Don't try and maintain these. I don't want it to bring in these test result XML files. Of course, lines that start with a hash here, um, they're comments. So, all right. So now if I do a git commit am, um, added test results to ignore list. To ignore list. There we go. Cool. Um, yeah, sure. Let's push that up also. And where's my build? Two new builds. Please show me. There it goes. It's this one up here. Uh, which one's it actually? It's a lot of builds. Don't do that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care. And don't do that one either. Do this one. All right, here we go. Nothing to it. Now it still says that weird Mac OS that we tried to fix, right? Build on Mac OS. That's the display name we gave it. And execute cake boot strapper. That, that spelled properly, but that it did this weird capitalization thing still. Build live updates have stopped. We're working to restore them. Now I feel shame. Where did it go? Hey, Sarah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, ancient coder, absolutely. Hey, back. <laughs> I like to increment Notepad by one each time I use it. Notepad plus plus. That's a good idea. <laughs> All right, here we go. 
come on, come on. Um, I'm told I'm told by my friends that have been to TwitchCon before that there's G Fuel all over the place at that event. So I expect to be properly caffeinated the entire time that I'm there. And I'm, I'm wondering whether I need to bring G Fuel with me to Ignite. Because Microsoft doesn't like to do some of those types of things. I don't get it, but... I've got plenty of little single single serving G fuels to bring along so I'm properly caffeinated. The itch it's back. Oh yes, siree. Um Oh my. Be careful. That's never gonna heal if you don't stop itching. Alright, come on, come on. The bootstrap published the taste re test results. Give me some good test results. <laughs> it says it succeeded. So do I have, what's it say under tests? <laughs> Got it. Got it. All right, now we go. Hey, Bokyo, good to see you again. Just good old plain coffee. I'm okay with good old plain coffee as well, but um, there's a bunch of other nutrients and things that they mix into the G Fuel that, that uh, are kind of nice. Beat Gaming XD. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining me. That number's creeping up. So what do you think, Sarah? Sarah, I'm... I'm looking at reducing that count from 5,000 to 4,500 as a goal. Let me know. What do you think? Should we should we continue to push for 5,000? It's exactly one month away. No sugar, of course. Actually, G Fuel is sugar-free. So, yeah. Sarah wants to see the rainbow beard. There's a... Make it 3,800. Now, Turrican! I see what you did there. That's... Mm, 3,500 uh, should be enough. Wait a sec. I had 3,500 a while ago, Helder. 4,000. Uh, 4,000, I think, is a little bit too low. Now we need to add the badge to the core wiki GitHub readme. Yes. Yes. Great point, Tiago. Um, let me go back to the logs here so we can see it's going. Right? There's a little thing here that'll let you get the... There's a... Right? It'll, it'll help us get a badge for this let me come back up here I'm gonna click edit on this build right huh? And I'm gonna change the name of this and just call it core wiki CI um, I don't want to queue it just save it um, renamed there we go all right um, and let's see, there is, where is it? There's a little thing here that'll get you that badge that you can put on a page. And I don't, I don't see it. Go back to my build pipelines. I don't need this one anymore, so let's delete this. There's the badge. Um, please type it, the name of it to confirm. Yeah, type it. Tell you what, I'll type. Paste. I could go over 9,000. If we all survive to October 20th. <laughs> 640 ought to be enough for everybody. Uh, I love coffee, but it appears to make my IBS much worse. Oh, that's terrible. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, I don't blame you on that one. Ooh. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, here we go. Status badge. Yeah, that's what I want. I want one of those. Give me that. Simple markdown. Yes, please. I'll take the well, wait, well, it doesn't copy everything. Copy that to the clipboard. Let me go back over here. Core wiki up to the front page. And now I'm going to update because I want, and I'm going to remove this deploy button isn't working because it is working now. So let me go to readme. Because the readme on GitHub is what it puts down there at the bottom by default for you. And I'm going to click edit here. And let's get rid of this little bit. And let's put just above the deploy to Azure. So now when we preview it, now we'll... Do you think they should be stacked or side by side? Meeting and stuff for work. Uh, 
42 is the answer. Maybe the lucky number should be 4,200. Hmm. Stacked. Yeah, I, I agree. 4,200, that would be right where about... That would be about... Uh, uh, math, I, I can do it. Right, that'd be about 400 out. And if we're doing about 100 a week, that's doable. That's reachable. Um, let me go back and do a preview. Because I think just putting the carriage return... Yeah, that does it just fine. So let's... Uh, added... Uh, Pipelines build result. Yep, do it. All right. Now it looks a little bit better. Um, so, binary for the win. <laughs> yeah. I see what you're doing there. All right, so that's in. Um, let's see. We also need to get it attached. Well, no, it already is attached. It already is doing the build. Oh, but I need to get the build results. Um, I need to get the build results, right? Yeah, go away. Right, I'm going to get this check mark attached to GitHub. Nice, look at that. No test result files matching test results XML were found. No, it's because it's a different... <gasps> I didn't update it everywhere. Right, I fixed this. But I didn't change it. Do you mind? Thank you. Down here. And down here. Uh -huh. AM. Yeah. Um, oh, it's not going to let me do it either. I've got to pull first. Because I updated README. I need to get that update. Now, git commit. Um, and what am I going to say? Uh including all test results now. And now git push. <clears throat> git add first, asks Fretia. Well, when I do a git commit dash am, it includes the add. So I'll do a git push, send that back up. And there we go. So now it's going to run that build again, but I want to get the build status attached. Now look, it's building it twice. Oh, you know what? It's doing the first one because of the change to the um, to the README file. Yep, do that. Now, why am I... Right, shouldn't it show me who the person is that made the commit over here? Yeah, the README commit fret you. Oh, there you go, Mawardi. Yeah, dash AM. We'll, we'll both add and specify the message all at once. Um, but I... Right, this shows my face because, right, it was, I clicked run build, right, that's manual build. But the continuous integration build here, why isn't it recognizing me? Right, let's click this and see what it says here. Yeah. So, I mean, it's clearly got my information, but it's not, right, it's not logging my face. Right, as who caused this? Same email address. Um, right, if I click through to that, I mean, it clearly picks up everything and sees that it was me. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. But I want to clean up some of these older ones here. I wish I could control click on these or something, you know? Be like, here, go delete all of these. But I can't. Right, I'm gonna have to do these one at a time. Right, because this is where we were just monkeying around setting it up. And I keep using the term monkey. Um, I need to be careful of that. But I really am referring to, I am referring to the animal and how, how silly they are playing and getting into trouble. And that's exactly what I did here was I got into trouble. All right, there we go. I think the committer email is different from my Azure account. It is. And why isn't it bringing over the GitHub account of that person? That's my question. That's my... Um, 
that yeah that's my concern um so i've got the status badge now how do i attach this so that it's doing the build validation right Um, let me go up one. Right, because if I look at the commits, and that's really ugly, um, this is being fired by, oh no, Pipelines is there. <gasps> okay. So I could shut off AppFair. No, I, I understand what you're saying, Fretia, that the one with the image was the one I started manually. Maybe the generic image means auto started. I thought it picked up whoever made that commit that triggered it. And that was the I, that was the image that it showed. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach into my webhooks here and I'm going to remove AppVar. Right? GitHub processing, Azure websites. Let me... That's okay. That's a... Uh, I'm not worried about that one. But this one here, I'm going to disconnect AppVar. Yeah, that's my password. All right. So now I'm getting the updates coming through from just pipelines. Right, and you can see it's still building. And it's already done it on AppVar. But this one up here, it's actually building against each of the platforms. Right, uh, nuts. Close too many of them. Uh, I'm gonna keep my Fritz Cola open here because I want to do something with that. Nice. Um, let's see. Let's go back over here. Pipelines. So there it goes. Now. No way, Brave Cobra. I am, uh, I'm happy this is doing what I need it to do. I think we've got it. Now, what I'm running into, what I'm, what I'm looking at here, what I'm thinking about is when this runs, um, right, we're going to get that status information coming back over here, right, that it completed successfully, right? It's almost done Windows. Still installing. It feels weird that it takes so long to install. Uh, Andres, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, so the one thing that, that Abel had said to us was, why have a bunch of different branches just deploy and run everything out of one branch? If it tests successfully, deploy and you just have feature branches that you're doing your actual work in and when your feature is complete merge it into master and deploy there's no reason to have a dev branch and that's that's very compelling to me to take that approach because if we do have just that that deployment branch then we can write just a master branch that is here's what we've deployed that becomes very, um, very easy for us to point out and say, well, here's what's live. This is the real thing. And there it is. Everything built successfully. And if I come back over here, this should flip over to a green check. There it goes. And I can click through on details here and it goes all the way through and I can see it on pipelines. Fantastic. That's exactly how I want this to behave. Um... That's the difference between continuous deployment and release branching. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So do I start configuring a release that, right, when it finishes the build, sends it out to, to our production website out here at corewiki.info? I could do it. So pair programming is over? No, it's not over. Never over. I'm just making getting this configured properly, and then we're going to go back and do some more stuff. Right? We've got plenty of time. Plenty of time. There it is. 
So somebody posting hello world over here. It works. Hello world. So that's fine. Um, so the question, the right, what I'm looking at here and I'm trying to figure out. No guest today. Um, I actually have a guest scheduled for tomorrow and it's going to be our friend Mark Miller. He's going to join us for a little bit. He wants to show us some of the cool things that are going on with Code Rush um, and help us out with some of the code that we've been writing. So I'm looking at, at this and thinking, do I need to do a release? And I think I want to hold off on that just yet. Oh, yes. So Mr. Magoo has been working on a Blazor version of CoreWiki front end. And uh, I think there's something that we're going to be able to do there that'll be really cool to be able to deploy or, or choose which front end you'd like. Brave Cobra says you still want the build pipeline for each feature branch, not just master. Agreed. Um, when we have the build pipeline configured here, right, the get sources task is GitHub and default branch. So we would either need to either add additional build pipelines for each branch. I thought there was a way to specify build for any branch. Clean false. Perform different kinds of cleaning. Yeah, that's fine. Um, the dev branch is only there to collect multiple features before you release them. Yes. It's more of an integration uh, point. So, uh, I don't like to open my big project in preview Visual Studio now. Oh, sorry to hear that. Preview is a pain with licensing. They, I, I spoke to some folks. If you don't have a license for Visual Studio, they won't give you the preview version um, of, of, one of, the, of one of the two paid versions, either Pro or Enterprise. You won't be able to get that for longer than, I think it's 45 days. Um, which should be fine to evaluate and decide whether or not you want those features. But you can always run community version. Um, that's available for everybody. And there is some limitations depending on your organization. Uh, you know. So. What is that default branch thing? Default branch for manual and scheduled builds. Um, yeah, this is the branch it's going to pull from. I don't know why it says default branch. Right? Um, if I go over here to triggers, I should see a... Yeah, there we go. Core wiki pull request validation as well. It's right now disabled. I could turn it on and we would be able to see it. Um, and only that one. I don't understand the meaning of that setting. I agree. I don't understand that. But pull request validation, I do want that. Branch filters. Oh, here you go. Include dev. Sure. Um, build pull requests from forks of this repository. Important security considerations. Really? By default, secrets associated with your build pipeline are not made available to pull requests. Builds of forks. You're kidding, right? Can fork your repository, change it, create a pull request to propose changes. This pull request could contain malicious code to run as part of the triggered build. Oh, dear Lord. I see. All right. Then I'll just do pull request validations. Nah, from forks. That's okay. Make secrets available. No, we won't make secrets available. Uh, should we try a PR then to test the build pipeline in PRs? Maybe. Um, go back over. Not that one. <laughs> All right, so back to the source code. There is a PR here. Right, and this has been verified with AppVayer, yeah. Um, which right now doesn't do too much. 
Um, here we go. Let's do this one. Let's solve this issue here. So this is Blowdart. This is Barry Dorans, who's the head of uh, security review for .NET. Says you should only configure HSTS in development, in not development. App use HSTS options, max age days 365, include subdomains, needs wrapping with an environment check. And when a system uses HSTS for the first time, the recommendation is to start with a small value such as five minutes. So, um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm the, for the first time, start with a small value. I'm not going to go after that one, but I am going to go after this wrapping the HSTS check here. So let's just take care of that real quick. That lives in our startup configuration for this. Down here. Where is it? Um, security headers. So this right here. Barry's saying we should we should wrap this to check and make sure that it only does this when we're not in development. So let's do this. App dot. Um, where is it? No, wait a sec. That's not my configuration. It's not going to tell me if I'm in that environment. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I hosting environment. So we're going to need to pass that on, along as well. So let's add that, and we'll update this to include I hosting environment. I hosting can't type too well. I've been using that laptop for too long. There we go. If env dot is development, and we want to do this only if it's not development. Do we want to set that? It's the medication. Oh, fret you. It is wrapped in the templates. Yes. All right. Uh, oh, I need a doodad there. All right. Cool. I think that does what we need it to do. So let's just make sure this builds. Well, actually, my continuous integration. Look, it already reran. Right. Yep, all right, good. Sure, doing the thing. This build takes a long time. Cool. Git commit. Um, only setting HSTS when not in uh, development. Fixes, and what's the number that Barry has for us? 293. And I'm sure Barry appreciates that I'm signing all of my commits. So I will git push, and we should see this get closed, actually. There it goes immediately. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, now wrapping the uh, use HSTS setting with is development. Cool. And it should be building right now. Environment variable for the win. Yes, it is. Right. If I go to summary, there we go. Cool. Um, I'm going to approve that. All right. There we go. Yes, I was complaining about meds I had to take. Yep. Shorter lifetime. Shorter lifetime on what? What do you got for me, Parathon? Shorter lifetime. Maybe when we're the first time you run, but how how do I know it's the first time you're running it? Uh, why build on Mac OS still? I know. I know. 
Wow. It's right there. Anyways, um, so while that's finishing, what I'd like to do, that's not the right place, over here. Um, so we're looking good, right? I always like closing an issue that Barry opens. Um, deploy to Azure button. I think we can close this as well. Fixed, updated on readme and deployed. Enjoy building your own core wikis now. Cool. And I like closing issues that were opened by, who's this guy? Oh no. By, Stop. yeah him. Um, all right. Closing the issues, doing the thing. Add a NoSQL data provider like Couchbase. Absolutely. Tight coupling to EF, that's going away. So this um, EF tight coupling has been dropped. And you should be able to implement iRepository objects appropriately. Uh, was it Ubuntu month? That's so Ubuntu October, October, all Ubuntu. That's what we're going to do. Do this in a feature branch and test the PR experience. Um, I don't, I don't, don't want to. <laughs> uh, so not this month. No, no. In about a week, we'll start that. Um, let's, let's do this. Let's do not that over here. I'm looking for an issue that I can just hit here. Add cognitive services text sentiment on comments. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, we may work on this at Ignite next, Ignite 2018. I've, I think that's really good. Um, Node.js dependency, we're really close to having that dropped. Code made plugin inside Visual Studio, that's... Uh, Autocomplete search for article titles, implied consent for password reset. I thought we got this one fixed. No. I'll have to look at that a little bit further. Search, plugin safe load of modules, profanity and other swear words, user administration page. This one we fixed. I think we close this out. No, come back to that. Mm, code comments, what's this? Mm, go away, I'm all right with that. Can you submit a PR? Of course, I am rewriting the internet. Yeah, a little bit. Um, you might be thinking, uh, what is it, Octobox? Has a real nice interface. Adding and removing user roles workflow. That's a good idea too. Updating the add roles and remove roles combo boxes to buttons checked list view. Um, sounds like a good idea. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark this as an enhancement. It's a good first issue, help wanted. In case anybody wants to do it. Can I submit a PR for the internet? Oh, sure, absolutely. Hey, there's cam.net, good morning. What annoys me is uh, there is a spam bot that con is constantly hitting my phone and it comes up with a different city in New Jersey. And I know it's a spam bot because when you look at the phone numbers, they increment by one digit each time. So even if I block one of those, 
doesn't matter. The next day I get a phone call from that phone number plus one. Literally, the phone company needs to do something about the number of spam bo- spam bot phone calls, robo dialers that are out there because I don't want to use a phone anymore. It's just not worth it. Have you tried Should I Answer Crowdsources a Blacklist? Uh, does that work on iPhone? Block a range of numbers then. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But the question is, how big is that range? I literally don't answer it unless it's somebody that's on my contacts list. Um, all right, let's 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 see. Let me go back over here. Let's go back to our code. I'm going to close out of this. Do I actually... Do we have... Yeah, I still have an Azure Pipelines YAML here. Let's get rid of that. Uh, Azure Pipelines YAML. Um... Pipelines, you know, it's weird that you have to add that. Yeah, I, I, I know. Whatever. Um, moving on. They're illegal here, but I do get spam calls from the U.S. Yeah, it doesn't matter that they're in illegal. It's uh, be, <laughs> it's criminals that are running it. So of course they're illegal. They don't care. Um, all right, I'm going to go back and let's try and hit one of these other projects that we have been working on while we've got a few more minutes here to work. Um, so we have three projects that are currently open. First Start Wizard, a little bit expansion of notification capabilities and localization that we've been working on. I want to dig into the First Start Wizard for a little bit here. So the idea, the problem, what we're trying to figure out here is we'd like to have a first install experience so that when you first install CoreWiki, we ask you some questions that helps to configure how it should run, um, right? How how you should interact with it, how the the project should run, um, and so that it's a nicely deployed application that has a an administrative user has some other things that you would want to configure with it. So this is actually being built and worked on right now. I haven't touched this in a while down in this project first start branch right there hello um so i think i need to do some merging first i need to merge dev into project first start and then do and then get back to doing some work over there so you guys were asking about doing some pull requests here let's do a pull request to push down in from from dev into project first start which is kind of the backwards, right? Not the, the opposite direction where you would normally go. And oh, yes, of course. Of course you can't automatically merge. Right? The, all these things here. Whew. Whew. This is going to be fun. Since it can't automatically merge, it's not actually going to do anything with it. So, and it won't let... Azure DevOps, it won't let pipelines do the build. So I'm going to do this locally. All right, here we go. Um, let's add this. Uh, git commit removed extra pipelines YAML. That's not YAML. Really? Didn't type it right. There we go. All right. Um, now let me go get checkout project first start. I'm using posh git so I get auto com- tab autocomplete on my uh, on my stuff on my uh, interactions with git. Building your Twitch Twitch extension. Oh, that's cool. Good for you. Um, what do we have here? What's going on in this? Yeah, I don't care about that. Um, I'm going to git pull so I get all the updates that are in uh, GitHub. And now let's let's do that git merge and break the world. Oh, yeah. Ooh, actually, look at this. Um, okay. Merge conflict in CoreWiki CS Proj and merge conflict in CoreWiki Solution. Not bad. 
that's a lot better than I was thinking it was going to be. Now, folks were asking me, why don't you use Visual Studio Code? Let's do it. Let's do Visual Studio Code. You're building a Twitch extension with Blazor? That's hot stuff there, Janesco. That is really cool. Um, let us know how that goes, because that sounds really cool. All right. Uh, close this. Close that. That too. Get me over into this one. What do you mean there's no active providers? Why not rebase instead of merge? Um, if I rebase, I lose all my history. Ugh. Of course, they're having issues because I need to merge them. There we go. It's right there. CoreWiki Core CS Proj, CoreWiki Data CS Proj, CoreWiki First Start CS Proj, Proj, and then CoreWiki Application CS Proj. Um. Hmm. Thinking out loud. Um. I thought I still needed CoreWiki Core. Right, if I go look at what's in the dev branch for the project. Project reference, it's only referencing CoreWiki application. Interesting, okay. Well then let's take the incoming change. And that should be able to build now. And if I go down to the solution file, let's see what's goofy in here. Uh, are you kidding me? What's core wiki first start? What's this? Oh, that's right. You know what? I think we want both. I think we want, I want both, but I need to bring up, there's an extra end project at the end here. Where'd it go? End project, right? I'm, I'm missing an end project. Where'd it go? Core wiki first start. See, I've got a project to find and no end project. So let's put that in there. Um, That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, okay. Now there's this bit down here. And I think we need to take both. Project parsing failed. CoreWiki CS Proj. You make me sad. Why? What's there, what's there not to like? No, really. What's there not to like? Go away. Uh, let's let's see what's going on here. Um, it was inside of Core Wiki, Core Wiki, and if I do a .NET build, probably an extra end project now. Oh, stop it! I see what you're doing there. But uh, hey, you know what? We can let's do this. Let's have some fun while we're here. We're, we're waiting for that. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to share information about our build um, and that we've got it working here with our friend, uh, with our friends that helped us teaching about uh, Azure DevOps. Um, right, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to share this information with our friends uh, Donovan and Abel, who who helped teach me a little bit about this, and uh, I'm going to make sure you know that they know. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks to at Donovan and uh, of course Oren helped as well, right? Where did it? What? what did it? Hey, there's Phil. Oh my gosh, Phil. 
What happened to you, Phil? Um, uh, oh, Novotny. To, let's see. One, two, three. Let's do this. At Abel. There he is. For helping me learn Azure, uh, Azure Dev, yeah, DevOps pipelines. My core wiki project on, uh, on Twitch is now using pipelines to, uh, for continuous integration, right? Sounds good. There we go. We'll share that information. You thought it was John Wick. <laughs> thought what was John Wick? Oh, you thought Phil was John Wick. <laughs> well, no, not really. All right, so did it build? Yeah, it built fine. Go pound sand there, uh, uh, Visual Studio Code. You don't know what you're talking about. So now if I go back over to this, yes, this one's upset. Now reload. Solution has been modified. Reload. Now let's see if this one works. This is the one that I'm worried about. And I and we'll find out if Brave Cobra's right that I have an extra. Yeah. Alright, hang on. No, no, it loaded. Ha <laughs> ha, it worked. Woohoo! Core wiki application, core wiki core, core wiki data entity framework. There's our first start project. Fantastic. So I got the merge working properly. All right. Um, so I need to finish the merge. Yeah, okay. So let's add those two files. Right? Core wiki. Yep, that one. Love it. Git commit merged from dev. Cool. Now I could rebase this. Right? Um, I could, I could. It's probably not a bad idea. And if I were to go back 116, oh boy. Well, I mean, if I just did that, right? Let's see what happens. Just for curiosity's sake. Uh, what? Shouldn't that work? Git rebase, right? Or is it something like that? No. No. Right, I'm 116 ahead of what's up there, right? So, hang on. Right, I wanna do a rebase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care about that. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. Where is it? Where is it? Show me. Do it. I want to do it. Uh, get rebase dash I. Well, I don't get this whole exact thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, oh, cam.net. Thank you so much for the follow. And yarg. Yarg, thank you for the follow, matey. I appreciate you joining us, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room, too. And no talking back, or a brave cobra will make you swab the deck. Something like that, right? Um, I'd like to rebase on head. Rebase, there it was. Re get rebase head, tilde five. Right. Get rebase, dash I, head, tilde... Right? Why doesn't that work? Needed a single revision. I don't get it. Don't get it. Don't get it. Right? I want to find origin first start. I wonder if I can just do that. Git rebase. That's not how you spell it. Feisty lobster. Okay, there's our leader. There's our leader for the uh, for the cool nick of the day, right there, Feisty Lobster. Welcome, Feisty Lobster. So great to see you. And I'm sure there's other crustaceans that are quite terrified of you. No, too much. 
I should synchronize some stuff in Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Are you rebasing only my history? Sup? Hey, what's up, Feisty Lobster? Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Abdumbamin. Maybe try with a smaller number. Get rebase dash I head tilde five. All right, let's give that a shot. Uh, dash I head tilde five. Lobsters rule. They are amazing with a little bit of butter, some nice lobster tail. Mwah, that's great stuff. Holy crow! Okay, maybe you're onto something there, Tiago. Um, that's a lot of crap there. That's a lot of crap. If I wanted to just squash everything, right? Hang on. Let's back out here for a second, right? Not do anything. Right. Uh, yeah. This is going to be a problem. Uh, I'm going to do a git rebase abort here. Let's do that. Let's do that to start. And go back to the log because I think we're going to see exactly where it is that I need to jump in there. Yep, head five commits before. Yes, agreed. Look at this. I can't even I can't even rebase a board. No rebase in progress. What do you mean there's no rebase in pro progress? Of course there is. Get reset? Okay. It's just web stuff. Oh, okay. Uh let's see here. Let me so let me do git log. I actually want to go back. I actually just want to go back to here, right? Just right there. So it's really just head tilde two. Thinking out loud. Dash I. You know what? Let's not do a dash I. Because I just want it to squash everything. Right? Head tilde two. Yeah. I need the Wicked Witch of the West music. That's what I need. No, didn't work. One file. One? Are you kidding? Core Wiki Notification CS Proj. Hmm. Can't be that bad, can it? Uh, let's go back over here. Now, why does it keep saying? You. Go away. This one. Um, incoming change into core wiki notifications are these things. Um, I think we're okay to take all of that. It's okay to always add references, right? Well, we can remove the references later if they're not the right ones. But I think we're okay. Hey, Mark Berger. Good, Mark, Mark Beeger. Yeah, good to see you. Git ref log is really useful for this. It is. Web assembly for browser as Blazor is browser plus Razor. Yes, it is. Why are we rebasing? What's the point? I'm trying to clean up this merge a little bit. All right, so let me add. Yeah, look at that. All right, git commit fixed merge on notifications. What do you mean? Oh, Dummy. I forgot the dash M. There it is. Fantastic. All right. So now if I do get status, it should tell me get rebase continue. All right. So if I do that and paste it in there. No. Next conflict. Uh. Yeah, I did get rebase continue. Do it. Um, all right, fine. I'll get rid of core wiki dot test test result. Go away. No changes. Did you forget to get add? No, I didn't. Get rebase skip. Really? Oh dear lord. 
I'm gonna have to do this for everything. No, forget it. I know, you turkey. Man versus get yes. Yes. Uh, I don't care. I'm pushing. Yeah, my source might look ugly, but you know what? It's my source. Um, all right, so we were... I, I pushed that up. Now let's see if it built for... Look at that. It's building on Project First Start. It's building on the other branch. Right? That's kind of what we wanted to see. So I, I think that's... World exclusive. No, other people can do that too. Um, but I think that's pretty good and, and I'm pretty happy with that. Right? So we'll get some, get some coins out of that and be happy. Um, so let's close this. Uh, close that. Um, now, where I was going with this, let me close some of this other crap. Did I say that out loud? I guess I did. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. All right, fine. There's another Visual Studio code. Go away. Um, good. Wait a sec. Hold the phone. Go back into startup. Where was it? I just configured... No, not configure services. Yeah, okay. That's still it. You turn down the volume just just in time? Why? What happened? Uh, been using Git for five years. Only no pull, add, push. I agree, Mark. Mark Crossing. It's beyond that, it, it becomes a little crazy. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Did, I, did you hear me swear? No, no. I, I, I said the C word. Um, okay. I did not. I do not swear. Haha. <laughs> no, no. All right. Um, so what we were doing in this project, the idea... So now that we've got all that code management junk done, um, the idea with this project... Not that. This. First start wizard is to allow folks to be able to specify and configure... There you go, Turrican. What that first start experience looks like to configure the application. So to exactly that, we started to Turk exactly what Turrican is saying here, a Razor class library so that we can build that user interface. So we have an area called first start that we started putting some pages down into and we'll collect that user administration information so that we can build and create everything that we need for that so it's isolated from the rest of the application so that once this is run, this bit of code doesn't execute again. So we created, we're gonna create an area called first start and we're going to allow this to only run when we're in a first start mode. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so back in here, we started adding at one point. Where is it? I don't see it. We started adding in a check to a, a piece of middleware. Um, was it in routing? To do it to check if it was the first time that you were installing. And I don't see it. Let's do a quick search. See if we can find it real quick. Because we, no, I don't see it. Hmm. I'm trying to remember where we started that work. Um. Right, because we were going to check and see if this was the first time through to route you over to first start. Might have been, was it under configure authentication? <coughs> or was it like seed data or something like that?
Ray, we were checking to see if it was the first time through and deciding whether or not to seed the database. Um, and we were working on this with, with Javier, I thought. Um, <gasps> is it on my other machine that I was working on that day? And we never pushed it up. I bet you that's what happened. All right. No, I thought we... I'm nearly positive we pushed it up. Hmm. But we were deciding whether or not it was a first time through if the database didn't have... Didn't have any administrators to find yet, right? You need to have an administrator in order for it to be a valid application. So if it doesn't have an administrator or if we don't have a database configuration defined, then we it, it's the first time through. And the database configuration comes out of app config. Well, uh, listen to me, app config. It comes out of app settings. So our application settings here has a connection string, right? That's defined and says, here's exactly where to go to go get the data. Hmm. So thinking out loud, we probably want to replace when you decide what your configuration, what your database connection is, what, what database provider you would like, we would probably want to generate a database connection string and write it into this file. That way, no matter where you are, it always runs properly. But that also means that we're going to need to be able to update the file on disk, which not terrible, but it's something that we're going to need to think through. Hmm. Okay. So let's do this and, and let's set this up so that we can do this, um, do a little bit of this tomorrow with, with Mark. Um, so I'm going to create an issue, right? Uh, need to be able to select database provider. Yeah. Um, and this is first, uh, right, on setup. Now, what, what did we call the name of the project? Now I'm blanking, right? What's the name of the project? Uh, first Start Wizard. Let's call it First Start. On First Start, need to be able to select database provider. Uh, we should list database providers supported allow you to choose one and uh, write an appropriate update to app settings JSON. Wiki wizard, that's exactly what we're gonna be building here. Yeah, yeah. Um, that may not come from the file though. I use an environment variable in app service. That's another way to do it, but I can't set an environment variable that'll stay persistent in app service as an application. And I don't know that you're deploying to app service. I, the app settings file is consistent and that I know exactly where it is. So I think that's a safe way for us to do this. I'm gonna attach this to the first start. And um, this is an enhancement. And we'll work on that tomorrow. So I think, I think I'm going to wrap up there today. Um, let's pull that back a little bit. So I think we'll wrap up there today and we have a good place that we can start tomorrow. We'll go through and we'll, we'll start writing this in so that we can detect that it is your first time through and figure out here's the database providers that we do have and allow you to choose one of those and start building out your database configuration. And then we'll seed the database appropriately once you've selected a database.
I think that'll be pretty cool. And that'll actually set us up nicely for next week at Ignite, because next week at Ignite, the guest that I'm trying to bring on is an expert on Cosmos DB. And I'd really like to be able to add Cosmos DB in as another database provider so that folks can then say, well, I'd like to use SQLite or I'd like to use Postgres or even Cosmos DB and then drop in your configuration, your connection string to that and we'll give you an appropriate database provider configuration and we'll configure everything appropriately for those. It can be anywhere on the config settings chain. Yes, it can. You're absolutely right, Smab. Uh, maybe you have to choose which place is updated. So maybe we give some templated information that says if you'd like to use this as an environment variable, here's the configuration setting you need to define. So th I think there's a couple options there. Um, that we can discuss and we can figure out. And I think we'll do that tomorrow. And my guest will be Mark Miller. I will not be able to be on on Saturday. I have, my daughters have an event that I'll be at. Um, so as of right now, I'm not going to be on Saturday. But we are going to be streaming all kinds of different times next week. Make sure you click that follow button so that you can be uh, alerted when I go live. But I will be streaming next week from Ignite. And it's going to be amazing. And then I can go find that other commit on the other machine. You're right, Lithix. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. I think Mark may... No, he doesn't stream on Thursdays. Right? I don't think he streams on Thursdays, does he? Let's take a quick peek. No, he's not streaming right now. So that's all the time that we're going to spend then today. I will, of course, archive this off. And we'll, uh, we'll have it available for you on YouTube a little bit later today. I'm going to archive off Tuesday's edition as well. Um, thanks so much for, for tuning in. I really appreciate you joining me here today. We'll see you tomorrow with our guest, Mark. All righty. Take care. We'll see you.